Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolays at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match was actually requested twice by Floris, apparently once while drunk. So, my mistake, it was only requested once, but I still found it beforehand, so this should be good? I don't know. Anarchid versus Dying Friend on Titan Duel. Anarchid going for Clokybot Factory, Dying Friend going for Hovercraft Factory, and. I have heard that this, this is apparently pretty interesting exploration of the meta, so I want to know exactly how that happens, which is why I'm watching the game, so that I can learn things. So Dime Friend going for an opening warrior. Interesting. I guess, sorry, Anakid going for an opening warrior. I guess they expect Dime Friend to go for the Hovercraft Factory because that's the thing you'd go for, and instead of going for the Glaze, which might get wrecked by those daggers, just go for warriors and just basically kill any daggers that come in, because why not? Actually, Oh, Warrior Glaive Tick with a few scythes as well for good measure. Wow, that's... That's actually quite an interesting setup. I agree with that setup. The Warrior's a little bit risky because you might not be able to do much with it. I mean, in this case, yes, you can, and it certainly deters any raids. Glaive Tick, that's what I was talking about in the first game that I think would work well for Cloaky against Hover. Even though, in that game, Snuggle Base did end up just using Glaives. And... I mean, with enough Glaives against enough Daggers, maybe. It's just that Glaives aren't that much less expensive than Daggers. Whereas Daggers, once you get enough of them, which I believe is because they're 110 damage each. So 110 damage against 200 HP means that you get two of them. Like, if you have two Daggers, a Glaive dies for free. If the Glaives are clumped up enough, several Glaives die for free. So that's the thing to bear in mind, is that Daggers can wreck Glaives. And Anarchid's Commander, not going to be doing too badly. I mean, this is actually a mistake on Dime Friend's part. A minor mistake. But no, there's two gla there's two Daggers! Glaives going to die for free! Except they aren't, because they didn't end up getting close to both at the same time. Actually, this is going very well for Anarchid just micro-wise right off the bat. Anarchid does have radar coverage, but they only have radar coverage of, the, of like a quarter of the map. Or less than a quarter of the map. Whereas Dying Friend has radar coverage of about the same amount of map. They both have radar coverage of a little under a quarter of the map. So, neither of them are in a great position right now to know what's going on. Especially as Anarchid is going in with a rating. Dying Friend able to see it coming somewhat, but it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Some nice retreat micro coming out of Anarchid to avoid losing anything. And the real thing seems to be this warrior. It looks like the warrior is just coming in as... A warrior rush. Like, there's some glaives to support it, to make it a little bit harder to see it's coming and a little bit harder to address. But this does seem to be a matter of Anarchid sending a warrior in. They just figure, what is Diamfriend gonna do? I guess they might build scalpels, but assuming they don't build scalpels, assuming they just build daggers, you just use warriors. And tick over in the north as well, that's the other option! Get the ticks out! And that was a nicely placed tick, by the way. I mean, very good prediction on Anarchist's part to know where Dimefriend would likely go. Because, of course, Dimefriend would probably go over to the north to try to avoid a lot of the main sight lines, and also to be able to get to the factory and some of the early metal extractors quickly. Titan Duel is the kind of map where you often have a setup that doesn't defend the main base corner very well, because it's a corner. You figure, all I have to do is defend a small line next to it. I don't really have to defend this back area as much. So normally you will raid behind that, and Anarchid knew that was coming, so nicely done, Anarchid. Now at the same time, Dimefrain continuing to go for attacks, trying to go for Anarchid's commander, which currently just getting its first upgrade. Dimefrain will be able to get a bit of revenge off this, and actually does have a slight metal advantage, though not so much production advantage, as they are not building anything. Anarchid, on the other hand, does have no support in their factory. They Looks like they're about to get that. Once they get that, that should seal the deal for now. But yeah, like I said, there's, there's the warrior. There's the attack. Anakin just coming in with the warrior. Why not? That's a that's a really good move. We're going to probably see scalpels. Yeah, there it is. There's an emergency scalpel being built. That'll take about 15 seconds to get built up. So, oh, Anakin, you can just keep going. Or get out of there. Like, just attack your way out of there. That works too. And coming in with the scythe was a pretty smart idea as well. Just to distract even further. But yeah, between Scythe and Warrior, this expansion temp is certainly dead. And the Scythe against Scalpel, Scythe will win. Like, if the Scythe tries to get rid of the Scalpel, the Scalpel's gonna... Ooh, that sucks, that retargeting. 
that retargeting on the glaive it needed to have set the target directly to the dagger. Otherwise, well, if that, we saw what happens. If it had set it to the dagger, that would have been great. That's, that's a thing that happens, but that's fine. Anarchy's still got a strong enough position over in that area of the map. They can still deal with the dagger here or there. But yeah, like I said, Emergency Scalpel has been built. Scalpel's actually... They're on the building menu now. They are being built regularly. That could become a bit of a problem. I don't expect it to be a massive problem, but yeah, it could be a bit of a problem. As well, Anarchid getting their production support going. They have not really accessed any metal either, so that's what they need. Dying for a little bit later on the production support. Had a bit of excess coming out earlier. They currently don't on account of having fewer metal extractors than they can work with. But yeah, that's the thing. Should probably worry about that. Man, that scythe had value. Anarchid losing their scythe over to the south, but after it take, helps take out three metal extractors and unfortunately not a quill. If I had gotten the quill too, that would have been really valuable. But even then, another warrior coming in. Or possibly the same warrior, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it's dead now, so I suppose it's not really relevant which warrior it was. Actually, I think this is the new Yeah, this is the new warrior. Follow the footsteps. Because the old warrior would have gone around and then gone back down. Still, Anarchid with the pressure onto Dying Friend. Oh, lucky Glaives! Able to get a kill without getting all hit. Or any of them. None of them got focused down in that entire assault. That's the one thing about daggers that's really tricky. And I'm kind of surprised we don't see more use of set target with daggers. Because with daggers, that is quite important, actually. Ooh, Scalpel just barely saved itself. 14 health left. That help, that will defend Anarchid's... Sorry, that'll defend Diamond base a fair bit. Anarchid's not going to be attacking from that angle for a little while. They do have a dagger coming up right next to the commander, which... I don't know if that's going to be relevant. I mean, the thing is, that's... Kind of... That's been spotted. Oh, I don't know. The Scalpel is... Nah, the Scalpel wouldn't come that close to it. It would have no reason to. Still, Anarchid overall is taking the northwest side of the map pretty effectively. It looks like they're going to be trying to secure the northeast side in a little while. The southwest side is their main focus for the time being. And, yeah, we continue to see the... Oh, hey, Inspectors as well. But yeah, Scythe, Warrior, some ticks. Like, basically, we're seeing all the cloaked Cloaky units with a little bit of Glaive support. This is not how Cloaky usually plays, though. Normally, Cloaky will play with a lot of Glaives, maybe a few Warriors and Rockos later on. But no, we're seeing that Anarchid does not agree with that idea at all, and is instead going for all the sneaky tactics. Now, granted, it's also Anarchid, and Anarchid loves their sneaky tactics. Like, it hasn't been done in a while, but the whole gremlin scouting thing that was a thing for Cloaky bots for a little while, and always tends to come in and out of meta, Anarchid's usually one of those people who uses it first. Like, when it comes back into the meta, it's usually because Anarchid decided it's a good time to use it again. So I'm not surprised Anarchid, of all people, is doing this, is going for all the sneaky units and using that as their backbone strategy. Because of course they are, that's, that's how they play. But yeah, once again, the scalpels are such a good choice against... Sorry, the... Not the scalpels. The scythe is such a good choice against the scalpels. Once again, unit names starting with the letter S. Confuse me to no end. As has been established well in the past and consistently. At any rate, yes, the scythe helping to get rid of the scalpel. Great choice against the scalpel. Probably helping against the halberd too. Oh! Ooh! The halberd locking up right after the EMP... I didn't realize that was going to happen. That's slightly problematic, because that means there's less damage being dealt. Oh, and that scalpel attacking a little bit too soon. Still, that halberd's not on hold fire. No, it's not on hold fire. Or, that's move state, but it's not on hold fire. Why are they not on hold fire? That's very bizarre. That doesn't do them a whole lot of good. I'm surprised Dimefriend hasn't set them on hold fire and then just has them attack directly. At this point, though, the important thing is... Like I said, Anarchid's got a bunch of sneaky forces around the map. The Spectres got around the map. It's... It's set up... Oh, fire at will. Or sorry, when attacks. Sorry, putting... When, fire when attacks. That's possibly even smarter. Not as so much for Halberds. Halberds should be fire at will, but for Spectres, that's... If that's not the default fire state, I could have seen that being a great default fire state. At any rate, fire states aside, Dimeford's commander almost getting killed here. Not quite, though, but man, if that Spectre got close enough, it's got to be scary for Dimefriend. They pretty much can't move their commander out. And I'm sure they're aware of that. Like... 
They can't do much about that, but at any rate, ooh, Spectre being spotted out. Gotten rid of Anarchist Commander under heavy threat. Nice jump away from that. It still might get hit by the... Yeah, the scalp missiles will still deal a bit of damage to it, but at least it gets away from that one volley. Gets to a bit of a safer position. The Halberds still providing a lot of threat, but it's not enough. Anarchist Commander able to escape. At the same time, another tick to stop an assault... or to help an assault come in here. Glaive tick is possibly the way to go, as Anarchist pointing out here to deal with Hovercraft. And it was mentioned before, but still, even with that, Dynefern still has a strong position with the Scalpel. Still has the Penetrator coming in. I mean, that's a major clock coming into Anarchist's base right there. But yet, another tick comes in here, and it would appear that Halberds do indeed lock up. They close up when they get hit by a tick. Oh, Penetrator got rid of, so Anarchid at least is stopping that assault from happening, because... That Penetrator could have been a massive problem, and Anarchid saw that coming and dealt with it. But that's the thing, this style is clearly a rather micro-heavy style. Like, it's tricky to set up, it's tricky to get going against Hovercraft like this, and I can see why someone might not want to do that. This isn't a simple way to play Cloakybot Factory, this is using all the units in the Cloakybot Factory, except the Roccos, but using, you know, the rest of the units. Not Rocco, not Zeus, not Hammer, the units that are sneaky. The units that make it difficult for your opponent to actually deal with. Like, scalpels can't hit things they can't see. Halberds can't hit things they can't see. Daggers, they can only move so fast. They can only get around so far. And if Scythes are on the opposite side of the map, there's not much they can do about it. And Dimefriend's commander now getting attacked again. Probably is going to go down. There's no defenses coming in here. The warrior up the front is also distracting the rest of Dimefriend's forces. So Dimefriend's commander goes down. And only at the cost of two of the size as well, so Anarchid's still able to get away with that. Keeping a couple of the size alive. And still applying strong pressure with more size in the back, getting rid of a quill. So two major workers done. I don't even know if there's any quills left. What does Dimefern have for workers? They have five quills. Okay, so they're not they're not hurting for workers terribly, but losing their commander is still a blow. They got the storage back up, so at least they're able to keep getting economy back in, but they they probably don't want that to happen. That means an Anarchid's going to be in a worse position if they lose their commander. They are getting their build support, but that excess at the same time. Their economic advantage is clearly not as strong as it appears to be, but their territorial advantage is strengthening. They're... I mean, they're more... Not so much strategic advantage, but I guess their unit-based advantage, their tactical advantage is also increasing. One thing, though, is that Anarchid does have a bit of a strategic disadvantage. The problem with the units they're using is that they're not great at holding ground. They're okay at holding ground, they're not great at holding ground. So, I mean, Glaives are okay at holding ground. Scythes aren't great at holding ground. Spectres, as soon as they get caught out, are dead. As we see there. Ticks are fine if they have support at holding ground. But, like, Warriors are the thing you'd want. Rockers are the thing you'd want. But Rockos are not being used here, and I can see why. I mean, Hovercraft units are so fast, how are you going to hit them with Rockos? And Warriors, I can see why they're not being used as much, because once again, Hover units are so fast that it's difficult to get Warriors there, they have to be already in place. Nice Glaive Assault of the Northeast, though, is showing us the power of Glaives in this matchup. Which is, of course, something that people probably know anyway. Still, at this point, Anarchid is able to reduce a bit of Diamond economic advantage, and actually... That should turn this around. Anakid now collapsing down onto Dimefriend's north line. Like, sides to soften things up a little bit, get rid of a few sp scalpels right in the back. I don't think there's any specters that are nearby. There's one that's a little bit of a ways away. It's just slightly out of range of everything, but it's still close enough. Should be able to actually get rid of this quill right now. There it goes. There's the quill down. And... Yeah, that's kind of the thing, is that this is still this is still a tactical advantage being turned into a strategic advantage here for Anarchid. Dying for going in with mass daggers, that's what they have left. Actually, mass dagger, mass scalpel. They're just getting all their units, getting one last push to try to stay in this game. But they don't know where the Spectre is necessarily. Although, looks like in chat there's some discussion about a widget that actually is able to figure out where the Spectre is based on the projectile path. Which makes sense. And... That's been helpful, but even with that, even with the Halberds knowing where to go to deal with that, it still hasn't been enough. And a tick coming out there, that 
like I said before, locks down halberds, so they aren't quite as vulnerable as you might hope if you're the one using the tick. But still, that's something. But the glaives are distracting as well to open them up to get them vulnerable to a sniper shot. That still works out. So ultimately, these halberds aren't doing that much. But still, Diamond Friend with strong dagger presence. Still an okay economy. They're behind Anarchid quite a bit, but Anarchid's forces are spread out between a lot of sneaky forces. Not so much, like, they need warriors right now more than anything, and they don't have them. Ticks are going to be very handy, though. That actually might even things out. Noticing Lamadeus is pointing on the, in the game chat during the replay that there was enough daggers to win, but there's also a bunch of ticks. And that clearly did the trick to keep the daggers at bay long enough to give Anarchid pretty much the winning position. Like, that was ticks. That was all ticks. Warrior, warriors would have been good too, but none were in place. Ticks were. And there's some warriors for backup as well. Anakin realizing probably that, hey, maybe I'm going to have to deal with a bunch of daggers again. And not just scalpels. Because that's what warriors do well, and scalpels, of course, kill warriors. So, yeah. Smart play by Anakin, though, with the ticks. That kept them in. It was a strong position for Diamond Friend. It's just that the problem is that strong is only so good. Clever is what won that match. Or won that little engagement. Clever use of units, clever synergies between ticks and glaives, which is, of course, a pretty typical setup for Cloaky Bot Factory. Tick glaive, that is... That's the thing you see against Jump Bot as well, or saw it one point against Jump Bot. Aquinum really pro popularized that for a little while as the versus Jump Bot meta. But it's just a generally, generally useful equalizing force. Like, when you have ticks, you reduce your opponent's army, so even if they have strong units, if they can't use them, what difference does it make? Still, Dime Friend not going down without a, uh, without a fight, and this fight is a bit protracted. The Tick's not actually able to do too much to Dime Friend's forces. Dime Friend being a little bit more careful about how they approach, making sure that they don't run into Tick minefields too often. Not that there are very many anymore, though. The focus has shifted a little bit to Warriors because, I mean, Ticks are strong, but they are very positional. They are a bit finicky that way. So you gotta be careful about that. Still, Anarchid remains stable and remains at a massive economic advantage. As well as able to claim the reclaim fields here, it's just... This is almost disgusting. I mean, the amount of amount of resources that Anarchid has over Dimefriend. The fact that Dimefriend is actually able to stay in this might be the best indication of the strength of the Hovercraft Factory right now. Like, or at least the, the lopsidedness of this matchup. The fact that... Anarchid, despite having a two to three times economic advantage over Dimefriend, having that for the last few minutes, and having a strong money, a strong, sorry, strong military advantage, they're still not able to get rid of Dimefriend before Dimefriend is able to go in the back with some halberds, deal some damage, continue applying pressure along the front side, although I think those halberds, that appears to have actually used up quite a few resources and made it harder and harder for Dimefriend to raid around the side, but Dimefriend is still hanging on, is still staying in this, despite the fact that they have been so behind economically. I mean, Anarchid is going for a bit more unconventional tactics. They are going for units that aren't often used. They're going for, like, they're going for builds and setups that are kind of tricky to do, but also require a lot of careful micro, a lot of careful setup, that require synergies between multiple units, and that kind of have to be executed near perfectly in order to be able to work. And it's working, it's just that that's a lot of effort required in order to deal with this. And Anarchid is dealing with this. It is working. Like, it's clearly, it's gradually, but incessantly working for Anarchid. They've managed to get the economic advantage, and they're turning that into a military advantage, and it looks like they're turning that into a win. But consider how dragged out that was. Like, that's still... That's still a sign that there's possibly an issue somewhere. Maybe there's something we're missing, though. I mean, this is the first game I've seen that really shows what Cloaky can do, or Cloaky needs to do, in order to deal with Hovercraft. And I'm curious how things will develop from here. Like, if we'll see more use of... Like, hold, like, hold Fire and Halberds would be a thing that I'd say made this match a little bit difficult to call. Because Dying Frame not using Hold Fire on the Halberds meant far more Halberds died than they had to before they managed to get into the proper position. And also, Mace against Scythe, that's more useful. Like, Maces in this situation, against the Glaives aren't so great, but when you only have one or two Scythes around, that's where Mace's damage, despite the fact they don't have Splash, that's where it comes in handy. So 
So, Anarchid demonstrates how to win with Hover with Cloakybot Factory. And man, that was a close match. Damn wow, damage dealt was almost identical. Metal income. Anarchid, like I said, had the advantage for about five minutes, and it still took them all that time to completely wreck up Dime Friend. Had a unit value advantage too. Holy crap. Unit value advantage and metal income advantage, like by cost, but their economy was way stronger than Dime Friends. And it was still a struggle to win. So that's still a thing. Like, that's difficult. And like I said, there weren't Maces used, which meant there weren't Rockos used, which didn't which mean Anarchy didn't need to use Rockos. But also it meant that the size had a bit more room to maneuver. And the Halberds didn't really lock up too much. Like they were firing a lot of the time, so they didn't get their armor bonus from not firing as much as they could have. So those are a couple of complicating factors that I kind of want to see addressed in later Cloaky Hover matchups. I expect players will adapt to that because, I mean, as Cloaky goes for more of the cloaked units, we're probably going to see a lot more, well, I guess attempts to deal with that. Like Mace is only really for for this, the size. It's not really for specters. It's not really for ticks. It's for size and size alone and everything else they have on the ground. They're like the Hovercraft Factory doesn't really have a whole lot of other options. Claymore is useless on the ground. I guess they could use the scalpels to like attack f areas they suspect ticks are in and use the splash damage to fish for ticks. That's all I can really think of. Well, at any rate, that is that. I was glad to have watched that match. Thank you for requesting it, Floris, even though it was a thing I was already going to do, but I'm glad I watched it anyway. So, interesting match, very educational. Hopefully that helps develop the Cloaky and Hover metas. But that is going to be it for me tonight, so I hope you enjoyed that. Have a good night, everyone.